Hello stock traders, I hope all of you are having a great day and are ready for Monday and this next week that is pretty power packed with some different things going on. Of course we have the Fed rate decision and so that is coming up. We should know a lot about that on Wednesday and find out what Jerome Powell has to say about how the Fed is going to react to these banking troubles that have been happening. Are we going to see a rate hike of a 25 basis point or are we going to see them just kind of stay out no rate hike no rate cut or are we going to see a rate cut i personally think we're going to see a 25 point hike my reasoning for that is inflation has not gone away we are still at a six percent inflation rate so the economy is not healthy and price stability is what jerome powell has been talking about he's been saying that the fed is going to keep at it till the job is done so here is the big test it is coming up this week in this video, I'm going to talk about some different market crashes, um, some the crash specifically of 1974, and I'm also going to talk about why I'm not buying stock at this time. Uh, so you want to stay till the end of the video, and if you appreciate this content, please hit that most amazing and wonderful like button. Also, if you haven't done so before, please subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified when a new video comes out. So here lately, I have not been buying up stock. So in my uh, Discord group, in my private Discord group, I've been talking about how the market is at a risky point. And I'm going to talk about the different things that I look at as we get going here. But let's start off by talking about the S&P 500 and the way that it looks right now. So you can see here I have pulled up on this chart. You're going to see all these yellow lines and I know this is kind of a mess, but these are all the open gaps to the upside. There's a small gap right here. You can see some different gaps that are open here. Um, some levels of resistance um, and support that should be important again as we get going. So some of the things I don't like, this is the uh, 13 EMA and it is crossed below the 48 EMA. So that is a negative thing in the stock market. Also, I do not like to be in stocks when we are below the 200 day EMA. That's what this white line is here. We are right on top of that. We could see a bounce from there, but I think any bounce is going to be short lived. And the reason why I wanted to come out with this video is because there's one factor that I watch that you need to be watching each and every day when you trade stocks. And one is the VIX. The VIX tracks open contracts for puts, calls, so on and so forth. It forecasts and does a very, it's an algorithm that forecasts the probability of a direction. And right now it is elevated above 24. So when the VIX is above 24, I have not had success in trading the stock market. Anywhere between 24 to uh, 46 is no man's land for me. So being that that's the case, even though there's great stocks with insider activity, typically I like to buy stocks with insider activity that are bullish and go in. I will wait out of the market when we are in this type of situation. So right now I'm at a hold because the VIX is at 25.51, 25.51, and that is above my 24 threshold. But when the VIX gets to 46, that's when the magic starts to happen in that it never holds that level and I have made huge money on stock market crashes, waiting and being patient between that level. And so if you are looking at stocks right now, you have to be absolutely sure with an elevated VIX, there is a high probability that we could see a flush in the market. So typically we get one of these flushes every two years to three years, somewhere in there. The last one we had was in 2020, made huge money on that trade. And you should be on the lookout for a possibility of that. And I've talked about that in my last video that I kind of came out with. So right now, when the VIX is elevated, it has to be below 24. If it is below 24, then it fits my rules for entry into stocks. I will enter into stocks with really good insider activity or stocks that are have a PDUFA date coming up that fit the criteria of that strategy or phase data strategy or my long-term strategy. Uh, right now I am holding uh, a lot of those stocks open that have not hit their exit points. So 
I will hold a stock. I have a plan and a reason why I will enter a stock and also why I will exit a stock. So right now I'm in a holding pattern waiting to see what happens in the market. So if we get down below 24, I will take a look at insider stocks and be alerting those later this week. But right now, I mean, there just isn't really anything good to really talk about. Too much risk, in my opinion, of what could happen. Now, I personally hope that while I'm out of the market, that we get a big dump in the market and a spike to 46. And if we do so, then uh, I will make a lot of money in that situation. Uh, but right now, some of the things that are kind of going on is, of course, what's going on with the banks and our loss in faith in banks. And so any type of run could happen. A lot of these banks have a big losses on their, uh, on their balance sheets that they would have to claim to cover liquidity. And so that is something to kind of be aware of. So looking here, some of the different gaps open to the downside on the SPY, on the SPY ETF. The S&P 500 ETF is 371 to 368. That is one gap that's open down here. Now these are gaps that have been open for a long time. We have this other one that's open between 330 and 328. That is way down there. And then my ultimate, if we were to see absolute panic selling in the stock market, I believe the S&P 500 ETF could get all the way down to 375. That would match the average drawdown of some of, of another market crash that happened, which was in 1974. And in 1974, some of the macro things that were going on, one is, is that they had high inflation, but they also, what creeped it up and really started the waterfall of selling is the unemployment rate to start to move up. So if we were to see that, uh, that would be very, very bad for the stock market with everything else that's going on. I could see a massive uh, dump in the stock market in that kind of case. And when waterfall selling comes in, you do not want to be in the market in those type of situations. There is no strategy that makes money during that. I mean, it is, it is bad for all stocks as we see that panic hit the market. And I have made so much money by having cash on reserves, even though it takes discipline to just say, wait, things are a little risky. I'm just gonna hold my money on the sidelines. Things are a little risky. I'm gonna wait for that VIX to spike. And if it spikes to 38, I might take a look at a few stocks or exit a few things. Um, I exit a few things that I had that are part of my bearish strategies because not only do I have strategies that track insider activity for purchases, but also strategies for massive insider selling. And so that would be a key to me if we hit 38 on the VIX. That, that is another key level of the VIX where it has been, where uh, the VIX has been rejected many times in the past. And so that could come open. I wouldn't be in insiders bullish. I wouldn't be in any of my bullish strategies in that situation. But um, all my bearish strategies, I would look to take profits right around there. And then I would just be patient and hold as cash on the sidelines because that massive panic of selling, you do not want to be a part. And so some of these gigantic uh, VIX spikes that we have had, let's go to the monthly chart. You can see back here, uh, this was in March of 2020, so that it was a very famous month. It got all the way up to 85, but it didn't hold. See how fast it just kind of came down, and a few months later, uh, we were in the 20s, which is more of the average of the VIX of where you'll see it um, during the situation. We have another spike that went crazy here back in February of 2018. That was a phenomenal a uh, quick spike, less than a week, and it was up and then down. And oh man, that was fantastic. Made some big money on that. Uh, here, uh, back here in uh, 2015, another one uh, that I wasn't positioned correctly for when this one traded and did not do as well with this one, but that comes from learning and looking for these different spikes. And uh, on the sidelines again, above that point, 
we have uh, where it got to 46 a couple times back here in 2011. We had it happen again in 2010. And the big one, the financial crisis of uh, 2008. And this took a long time to develop. You can see the VIX was elevated above 46 for a while, much longer than the other times. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took seven months, uh, eight, nine, it took nine months to kind of come out of that whole thing. Um, you know, that was a very long, most of the time these spikes are very quick. You can see back here in 2002, it was not uh, very long and it was down and under control. So what I'm trying to say is you can... You, you look at these stocks and you're like, oh man, I got to chase, I got to chase, I got to chase. Do not. If the VIX is above, right now the VIX is above 24, I, yeah, it's just too risky. It just isn't worth it. The likelihood that you're going to catch a good trade is way diminished from where it is in a normal and healthy market. So I would, uh, I would recommend having that cash on the sidelines. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Of course, you need to do your own due diligence and you are responsible for your own trades. I'm not responsible for your trades. Um, and But this is something you know that I've seen in the past and a good reason just to kind of sit and hold on to just whatever you got to hold on to to keep from uh, keep from spending hard-earned money in the stock market that you could easily lose because the market conditions are not what I would what I like anyway. I wish you all the best in the stock market. I hope you have a fantastic week in trading. And Raytoven out.